Friendship permanently tarnished. No. Need a beer over there? He's ready to watch the fireworks. Well, that's nice. Worst team ever won World Series. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. Who, who was like Joe Morgan on that team? Who's like the big. Oh, no, 2006. Oh, 2006. Sorry. Yeah. Joe Morgan. X time was the World Series MVP on the Reds team? For the Cardinals. Oh, for the Cardinals. Yeah. So he won one with yeah. the Angels and with the Cardinals? I don't know. Yes. Was, was he on the 2000? X time, yeah, he was our shortstop. Yeah. yeah. Dude, watching that guy throw to first base, every time you were like, yeah. like he couldn't throw it on a rope. Really? No, he was so, yeah, yeah. He was scrappy, but he had no natural gifts. Epstein? Eckstein. Eckstein. Epstein's a molester. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. All right, let's do it. <laughs> that should be how it starts. That would be good, yeah. Eckstein? Oh, Eckstein. Um, um, melt the wax. And give my nipples a charge. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad no song. Kroger coming in with the Going Deep with Chad JT podcast. Guys, before we begin, I remind you once again that we are brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dongs are looking fresh and clean because you've got a dong, right? Or if you're a lady, you've got a vagina. And, you know... Uh, you got pubes. You got pubes, and sometimes you <laughs> you got a clean house. You got to take care of what's going on downstairs and just trim it up, and to let your body and your genital area know that you care. So use code GoD20 at manscaped dot com to get twenty percent off your first order. Go deep twenty at manscaped dot com. We also want to give a huge shout out to our seltzer sponsor, Fruit Smash. The best hard seltzer in the game right now. Strider is smashing one. How do you? How's your smash, dude? Baby, I'm just kicking back and smashing right now. Yeah. Tasty. I'm, I got pink lemonade going. Makes me want to get a nice burger, dude. Let's go. Hell yeah. Dude, I mean, tons of stokers are getting fruit smash. They seem to love it. It's nice. Have you, drank, have you tried fruit smash? No, I haven't had any of the seltzers yet. Oh, this will be your first? Well, I'm, I'm just afraid. Should we get you trying? Yeah, you want no, to try I don't your want first it. One. Try your first. I'm one. afraid it's going to be too good, and I'm just going to start pounding it. Correct. That's what's going to happen. That's, yeah, it's you're going to happen. It can't happen. It Drinkability can't happen. huge, so, huge. So you're going to just deprive yourself of Call of Duty and seltzer? Yeah. Have you not been jacked? I think. You know, I, think I think at the end of the episode we'll have you try one, well, and we'll get your on camera review, because it's too good to pass up. I mean, that's like you know electric entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, electric. I will, are you time out? Yeah, can we time out real quick? Is Chad out of the wide? I think I'm in there. He's in? He's, he's not too cut off? Nice. I can scoot in a little bit. Want me to scoot in? Yeah, can you scoot in a yeah. little bit? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm like no, worried I'm about it. Smart. Baby, smart. Sometimes you got to put on the producer hat. Not easy to do. <laughs> People, people were complaining about uh, not having the wide. What happened to the Chad? You might it might be good if you came in a little Am bit. Too. I'm sorry, dog. No worries. What happened to the song up top? Uh, post. It gets put in post. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, how are we looking, Aaron? We got it. All right. Nice. Uh, Joe, am I detecting salts or shame? <laughs> Huh. Yeah, I don't. I I just try to only drink beer. I try not to drink any kind of sugary. Is there a really, how's the There's sugar? Barely any sugar. Yeah. One gram. Damn. Real fruit juice. Contains. You know what? Real what juice. are we talking about? The end of the episode. Of you got a excuse. seltzer right there. Joe, pop that thing and give it a swirl. I can't, I drove here. Four point seven percent. You live two blocks away. We're saying a sip. I'll like, drive you home. I've only had a few. Maybe later. Kidding. You can Kids, spend the night. 
You can spend the night. <laughs> Dude, have you guys had well, a sleepover yet since living in the new place just for old time's sake? So oh, what the fuck? Yeah. I was feeling nice. a little squirrely the other night. I was like, maybe I'll just go stay on the couch at Joe's place. But uh, I, just, I know I got self-conscious. Joe's got to come here. Dude. He comes over. I, don't know, I, got more, I got more furniture now than he does. Here. That's really? Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. I got to come back and see the layout. Got you couch, guys have a credenza? Seat, Do you have a credenza? Yeah. Really? I Wait, come what is that up? again? <laughs> Bro. I mean, it's a basically a non-functional piece. It's a space filler, what people that hate on it would say. But honestly, it's a beautiful piece of furniture that fills space in a fun way. It plays with void and really ties the space together. Typically a hallway. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think we all play with void. Don't oh, we? Wow. Especially lately, dude, during these times. I've been playing with playing with myself in the void of my bathroom, drilling myself. Oh, you're How often is that happening? Mm, not daily. Nice. Right. Nothing wrong. Sometimes with if I'm busy though, it won't happen. But I'll make sure to make up for it the next day. Do back you, to back nut. Do you try to diversify your skeets? <laughs> as in where I'm dropping it, or as in how fast, or? Yeah, I think everything. I mean, I don't know if you really have. I, I don't know how much control I have over my skeet. Oh, me not. In terms not. of like, you mm. know, if, if I want to, you know, it's like when you twist the nozzle of like a hose, and it can be like spray or just like. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was thinking like. If you aim at, you know, it's like today I'm going to get the soap dish. Oh, some, no, I, I can't aim. Look, I'm, I'm, I have a tiny cock and I'm a quick buster. And when it, it happens, it happens and it's enough. And I, I'm more of a, let's just let it where it's going to go. It's going to go. And typically that's in the, the sink where my fiance washes. I think you're underselling yourself. I've seen you have sex. It's pretty electrifying. Are you serious? JT animated I'm serious. it. Serious. It's a big deal. Yeah. What were you doing in thank there? Thank you. I just came home. The fucking guy left his door oh, open. It was my fault. Yeah. No, yeah. Joe. Thank you for clarifying. It was like but seven at night. JT to no to no fault of his own. I just I we were in the throes of passion. I scurried into my room and the I didn't like the door would swing shut behind you, so they knew. So I stayed in my room for like eighteen straight hours. I was making noises, dude. I didn't know. Here's the thing. I was sewing it. I didn't know I make noises. I, I heard you were like you're like oh oh oh. Oh, <laughs> that, that's right, right? It's true. JT would be a better testament than to myself. I didn't know I was making noises. I was in the void, you know. That's cool. In a beautiful void. You lost yourself. Correct. Speaking of being in the void, yeah. Were, were you having an out of body experience just watching your tiny dong from above? Hmm. No, no, I think I was just more engaged with my fiance than GF. Nice. Just looking deep into her I eyes. I knew in that moment, I was like, these two are getting married. You knew that? Oh, I love that. That's nice. <laughs> you knew probably slightly before I did that. That was, that was a while back now. That was maybe seven, seven years. Seven years ago. Yeah. Man. Nice. Oh, wow. Good memory of the yeah, Our butler Not place, sick. dude, on the west side. Yeah. The young Spry Stride. That was a good spot. It was a great spot, dude. Yeah. It's nice just... balcony. It, it's... We didn't know how good we had it. Totally, dude. That apartment was amazing, bro. It was really nice. Iconic. Did you guys, did you guys feel that earthquake last night? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, dude, woke, dude I did. It woke me up. I live at the epicenter. That's crazy. I was at the epicenter. Really? Congrats. I looked at, yeah, I was pretty stoked. Yeah, I looked on Twitter and they're like right near LAX airport. I'm like, dude, I'm like right there, the epicenter. And it felt, felt like someone picked up my house and like shook it and then put it back down. Yeah, that's, that's right. not Yeah, it sounds like it's like your house is like taking off like a plane. Right. I'm so, so lazy. When it happens, I'm like, fuck dude just let the shaking stop like i do not want to get out of bed right now i was like either just have the building fall on me i don't want anything in between dude yeah it always happens when we're in bed yeah yeah that's true yeah i don't want to get up either yeah that'd be a funny scene in the movie you're like shut up and then your house just collapses (laughs) dude i know dude i always think it's war i always think we're being attacked i yeah it's so it it, it's awesome i think i'm like oh no they're here who Korea, North Korea. I think it's that's who I normally think it yeah. is. That's a very it's intuitive too scary, guess. bro. Yeah. Well, I mean, did you go on Yahoo and it's like Kim Jong Un's sister just said this, and I'm like, dude, no. So uh, at all times, are you sort of vigilant of like missile alerts? I, I'm pretty aware of them. Really? When we were in Hawaii, you, oh, okay, you bro. Yeah. I was gonna say every time I go out of town, I have an intrusive thought where I'm like, if LA got nuked now, who's the, who? Do, I'm not there. Good check. But who do I love is there and how will I miss them? I literally have that thought. Oh, really? nice. I'll be enjoying just... myself having like a Mai Tai and I'll be like, I should just be enjoying the sunset. But I'm right. thinking about nukes, dude. We've had a good run of no nukes being dropped. Considering that so many people have them. Yeah, you bro. know, at one point, what, like 
us in the USSR, we each had like 20,000 or something like that. Something crazy, Whoa. yeah. And you're like... To like destroy the earth many times over. Yeah, and these people are always getting pissed off at each other and there's so much ego and flexing. And then, you know, we've had a good 70, 80 year run. That's that's pretty amazing. It's crazy. What keeps the balance is like mutually assured destruction, right. which is scary. Oh, I was We're standing aliens. in a pool of gasoline yeah, and we've all got matches in our hands. Exactly. Right. Don't throw it. And that's what Gore Vidal said. It's scary, dude. You yeah. think aliens are going to tip the scales? No, I think aliens are just chilling. And if, if one gets launched, they just zap it. They're like, not nah, play. Oh, that's, that's a nice way to think. Well, that's, be tight. that's, that's, that's yeah. what the, the theories are these days, that like the aliens came around the time of the invention of nuclear weapons because they're like, they came to be like, yo, humans, just letting you know, this is not chill. And um, so now they're kind of, and there's stories I, from Lucchese, I, you know, I don't know. He, uh, he he just told them to me that that you know there's stories of people have eyewitness stories of them like launching missiles and then like a ship comes and like zaps it. So this is online. Yeah, I think it's on podcasts and stuff. Nice. Our, our buddy Lucchese's pretty deep into the alien stuff. So I love aliens. I love aliens too. When I'm a kid, you know, like the people are afraid of the boogeyman. Yeah, I may have mentioned this before, but I saw a movie called Fire in the Sky terrified me yeah. I truly slept with my blanket over my head for five years we listened to the podcast with the Travis real life Walton. fire in the sky guy he was on yeah. rogan really yeah i should listen to that it's not as scary as the movie he has a very calm voice the whole time he's like then they took me up into their force field <laughs> yeah they say a lot of time it's like if he, the thing is he's an adult when it happened they say like when kids talk about it it's usually like a predator like a sexual predator and oh, really? their brain can't that's how oh, their brain geez. justifies oh, it. Took that alien. down no fun lane, didn't oh. I? Welcome to No Fun Avenue. Well, last time you were on, you thought that 29-year-old was a <laughs> I don't know dirty perv. So now I think you're I establishing a pattern. Yeah. And you know what they say? When you, someone accuses a thief, they're a thief. You will molest <laughs> exactly, bro. bro. You will molest a <laughs> my dirty, dirty, exactly. That'd be very shocking, dude. If I found out you were a molester, I'd be like, nah. Nah. <laughs> nah, I'm sure. A photo of nah. you on the news with tack glasses. Just... <laughs> I do have those tack glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did a lot of Look stuff like uh, I feel like if you do things that you do with a dog without a dog it's very molestery like go to a park just sit on a bench and just watch I do it all the time yeah. right pretty molestery Is but it? if you have a dog it's like well I'm just watching my dog yeah yeah you know but you know I, I'm a little Picking molester up poop. I, I go to parks and stuff and you know I'll, I'll observe people but I know where to draw the line yeah, yeah, you yeah, got you, you got some uh, auto check stuff. Yeah, used to just go tan on the sidewalk. Yeah, I, t- I, I like how this is all molestery. Well, but yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I'll take my I'll take my shirt I mean, off. It's pretty I'll, molestery, that's fine. and I'll read a book. <laughs> yeah, that's not that molestery. I don't think if I was doing that, if I was doing that awful stuff, I wouldn't be doing. I wouldn't be taking my shirt you know off. When I saw JT well, do one time, you know trust. You know, I saw JT do dude. Mm-hmm. Held a mass one time, dude, in the church. <laughs> How I did think about becoming a priest for a while. Are you saying pervs don't take their shirts off? Maybe they do, but I don't know. If you were a molester, I don't think you'd want people to think you were like libertine. You know what I mean? I don't think right. you'd want them to think that you were like. You'd probably want to seem as normal as possible, right? And I kind of make a spectacle of myself, so I don't. I don't think most molesters want to draw more attention. Although yeah. I don't know, there's that. Dude, so I used to go on like family vacations with my family to the Bahamas. Super chill. Sick. And then um, this guy had an island there, Peter Nygaard. I guess he invented like spandex. And, uh, you know, when you drive around on boats, people would be like, oh, that's Peter Nygaard's island. They throw the most wild bitch in parties. There. Everyone does coke. Everybody's naked. Now they're making documentaries about him that he's like, uh, like an Epstein oh, really? associate and that he was doing down and dirty stuff on that level and i'm like whoa man because everyone in the bahamas would be like no he just parties he rages he's like the most fun but now like the bottom's falling out and the truth's coming out and it's like it's pretty dark so i haven't watched the doc yet but i've just seen the trailer and i'm like oh that's gonna be bad did a lot of people know and they were covering for him or they just sort of assume they're like oh that guy's the man he just it was more that he's raging yeah no one was like you better watch out for him everyone was like it's the most fun party on the island bro you gotta go yeah Yeah, interesting it was like amp bummer what else? NCAA title tonight? NCAA title Yeah, stoked. going on right now, I think. Yeah, we're missing it because we're serious podcasters. Yeah. That's right. We get stuff done. Who you guys want? I had no idea. Gonzaga. 
Yeah, I'm down with Gonzaga. But how about that name, Gonzaga? Yeah, dude. Yeah, what is that? Oh, just... <laughs> what is it? Yeah, what I don't know Gonzaga? where it comes from. Is that the city? I, I think it's Dutch. No, it's Spokane is the city. Spokane, Washington. It's Dutch? <laughs> no, I was just saying that. I didn't oh. know it was in Washington. Yeah. Small school. Washington oh, it's in State. Spokane? Gonzaga's in? Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be beautiful. When I was young, Baylor... Baylor, remember they had like one of their players killed another player on the team? There was like a documentary about that and the mm-hmm. coach covered it up and shit. Yeah. yeah. What? Gnarly. Yeah. I forget what the documentary is called, but. Are we going dark like, too much? Yeah. It's a little... Yeah, this is not stoke inducing, right? Yeah. Now. How do we keep it stoke induced? <laughs> Fuck. Was that in the uh, 90s? I, are we chilling? An announcement. Whoa. What's up? Keep it stoke inducing. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, going through a, a breakup. Damn. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the single club. But you know what, dude? You're doing. <laughs> you're practicing what you preach. You're kicking it with your fucking boys right now. Oh you're yeah. Healthy. And dude. how many times do we say that when someone goes through a breakup? Kick it with your boys. Talk it out. Yeah. Do you need to say anything? What's going on? Hey, man? three of us are single now. That's what's up. Yeah. Just throwing that out there to the world. Hell yeah. The, the, the Joe, JT, Big C. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just painful. You know. Oh, sorry. That's good. <laughs> no, that's a fair assessment, though. Yeah. 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 You said uh, you said you were like when we were playing Call of Duty yesterday. You were like it was hard yeah, for we're, you to lock in. I was playing Call of Duty with the squad, and uh, I was like, you know, I was about to cry. I, I love was just that. Playing, I was like, oh, oh, but you know, I I don't know. You know, it's uh, it, it's 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 for the best. Is you know, it's amicable, and and uh, we still have love for each other. And uh, but I, I, you know, it's like ups and downs of just like painful and you're like uh, you know whatever and then uh but uh but i was kind of like you know because we talk about breakups and stuff and like pain you know and so like this morning i was just like i was at the gym i was like yeah the pain is good pain is good feel it you know it's gonna help you you know develop and and, and all that shit um <laughs> so, you're mourning yeah you're in mourning yeah yeah, 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 yeah. grieving yeah yeah so but yeah i, uh, I know a lot of stokers follow her so just one request that you don't message her or anything yeah I just be respectful yeah, yeah be yeah. respectful cool. they didn't say anything um that's good on you dog but joe how are the cougars uh they're uh they haven't pounced in a while not in my direction i haven't been pounced on really um Got yeah like i don't know you. i might be getting too old now for no, the cougars no never i mean I, maybe it's, maybe it's the approach cuz jt had his your dating profile you know tailored a little bit maybe it's yeah i had my like uh really cool smart uh gay buddy fix it up oh you and know he, what? And yeah he, like, i have terrible like pictures. dude i'll show you like okay so i look the, awful on this here. this is this is what's so interesting <laughs> i'm a mess this is my okay so i have some flex on it you know where it's like me on like ellen on there mm-hmm. with my dog um but you know i never watched that clip oh, i never really? watched us on ellen until last night are you serious? No, I never watched the whole thing. You never thing. watched it? I never watched the whole thing. I watched oh, the one man. minute clip and then I watched it for the first time last night. It, it was one of the one of the things we'd done. I was like, I could I could watch this all day. Yeah, it's great. Segment. Okay, check this out. So I would never have predicted this, but my friend redid my profile. So I have that. I have like me naked Wait, on can a wave I see runner. That picture right there. This is my most popular That's photo. That's a terrible picture. That's my most popular picture. You look great. And it's the potato chips deli. Hat. But I never would have the predicted that. Eyes. Yeah. You know, you know what my buddy said, and you know what, like the girls who have liked it told me when I asked him about it. They like the crooked smile. All right, you look like really? a mere Kabiri. <laughs> good guy. <laughs> in that picture. Good guy. Sorry. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. A mere well, good looking guy. I, I meant it as an insult. <laughs> oh wow, dude. Oh wow. Joe, I think for the Cougs, maybe you should get some photos of you like. By the pool, like near a cabana, you know, like. Well, yeah. Since I've been shaving guys. my head, I haven't done anything cool. Right, right. Of COVID? COVID? Yeah. yeah. But now you're yeah. partying. You had a party the other night. It was a rager. It wasn't a party. That was a party, and you were wasted, dude. Well, I was like, I'm not gonna. You take were like spilling there. beer and like yelling and stuff. So what? Where was That's this? Fine. I liked it. My house. Baby, what's up, dude? You wouldn't uh, have yeah, come. I'm sorry. I, come. I was chilling. Um. Do you know what you could do as one of your pictures? Huh? You know those like um, little Christmas villages that grandma set up and parents set up like fake snow, a little town hall, railroad track? Yeah. Put one of those on your cock and then just say, look, I'm into the holidays because, you know, <laughs> looking for someone to spend the holidays with. Right. It's I a like good that. time to, yeah, to uh, you know. You should. People want to be intimate around the holidays. They want to, Then they want a summer fling. So yeah, I feel like summer fling could parlay into something holiday for you. 
Yeah, I, some I, of Labor I've, Day. I have one too that <laughs> I think could really boost your uh, your profile. You get <laughs> you get hard. Mm-hmm. And you put a towel over your cock. And you say, if you need an extra towel rack, hit me up. All right. You say, hey, I've got his. Looking for hers. His and hers towels. <laughs> Or I do it. I, now I have his and her sinks. Maybe I should take a picture by the sink. Dude. Wash yes. my hands. I always like the one of you doing laundry. Do you still have that? Uh, No, I took that one down. My arms weren't that big in that picture. I wasn't getting a lot of action. Um, what about you enjoying a nice decaf? Maybe a JT style photo of his face like that, but you have a decaf in frame. Yeah. I think you need a, a, you need a close up of the mug. Like unadorned and just pure. All right. Yeah. You got a I mean, I'll face. take any ideas. Very handsome face. Any strategies. Um, I really don't want to be on the dating apps anyway. Yeah, they're brutal. It's very superficial. Mm-hmm. I try to win them over by being funny, and that doesn't work ever. Mm-hmm. So. Isn't it always just like, hey? Everyone just says, hey. You know what? I've been asking people on there, I'm not getting a lot of responses, but I, I just go, hey, what, what do you think the meaning of life is? <laughs> No one says anything. Yeah, no, no one's one responds. Say it. Yeah, a couple of people did. But no one wants to think no that. Does. But maybe, maybe not that many people would have responded anyways. It might not yeah. matter what I say. Yeah. I, I was filling out mine. It says must love, must love fish, ice. Uh, no, must love sharks, ice baths, and tanning. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. Yeah, Do they have an app pretty... where you have to read that type of stuff before you get to see photos? No, I think you have to look nah. at the photos and then scroll. I think it should be vice versa. Yeah. Oh, like like their answer before you see the photos? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of integrated into one uh, experience. You get a photo. That might an exist. Uh, that does sound f- familiar. Yeah, the best, but I don't know. Uh, I've been dating before these apps. I've never been on one app. Unversed in this territory. And I would uh, give JT be like, dude, what should I say back to this? The girl was like, hey, like I like coffee or something. And I'd be like, you need to tell her that you love her, dude. You need to tell her you're ready to commit, dude. You need to tell her that you want to have coffee forever. <laughs> I like it. He's like, no, nah, dude. Yeah, it was, it's tough. Well, it's always hard when you get advice from someone else too, because it's their brain. But you're trying to get someone to like your brain. So then, even if with like like Dustin would always have clever things to say, but then I'd like be stuck where I'd be like, okay, Dustin, what do I say next? And at some point, you're like, all right, you have to just like uh, strike out or 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 hit it or or succeed on your own. What's yeah. the goal of the interaction? Obviously, the goal is to you know have a relationship and stuff. But the immediate goal is like to get a date yeah like that's yeah. what you want you want short to term yeah match be a little bit charming that's the action and then through that's char- the process is there something on there where it's like i'd like to date and that's like a thing you click on there or you just have to say that in dming like no, that's yeah, on there. I think, people, yeah it's people on say there. you're looking for serious say stuff. you're looking for yeah. something casual a uh, relationship okay. yeah. have kids want kids you know well, all that raya has uh, just looking for friends so Interesting. You see some, they're like, yeah, I'm just looking for friends and business connections. I'm like, it's called go on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I yeah yeah it's it's so weird to me. Well, I, some people like uh, I was talking to one girl. She moves around. She moves every four months, so she uses Hinge to meet people. Mm. What's I, she move for? Like that. She's a traveling nurse. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. How 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 far into the interaction do you ask for the date? Do you like yeah you know, maybe hit couple topics and you like drop it down i think it's okay. different with every person like some people i think want to banter and get into a connection and you're always yeah. guessing and yeah. then some people it's like it feels pretty clear early on yeah but i think that there's it's like a momentum thing like you're like okay this is the moment now i think yeah. by about the yeah. third Jump message in. by about the third yeah what yeah. are your go-to first topics like do you talk paintball do you talk like maybe jet skiing crossfit okay you talk crossfit that makes perfect i'm sense. like hey do you have the hip mobility to do an overhead squat perfect they say, yeah, I'm throwing up plates. I say, yeah, Taroni Italian food, yeah. Saturday. Here's a plate for you. appetite. Here's a plate for you. <laughs> you got a plate Egg of lasagna waiting yeah. for you, lady. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about the calories. You're burning it at the gym. I love no, that. I don't know. Everyone's different, right? Everyone's totally. different. Chad, you're, are, are you, you on the app the same? Uh, I mean, it's too, it might be too soon. You don't need to answer. Don't feel like you're on the spot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting a, a bit for engaging. Cool. Just to process, you know. Dude, we should go uh, fucking paintballing. Dude, we definitely I was, should. We should. I was thinking I think that you need that. We dude. should go paintballing. Maybe we should definitely go paintballing. Uh, gotta go to Disneyland. Gotta go paintballing. You're stoked to go to Disneyland. 
stoked to go. He to loves it. I love Disneyland. I'm so stoked. What else is there to do? Everything Golf, pretty soon. Golfing, movie theaters right? are open. People Dude, are going to movies now. I'm going to go to a movie. Yeah. I would like to. I'm going to see Magic Mike on. My friend rented out a theater. We're going to go see a movie on Friday night. Really? Mm hmm. Amazing. Magic Mike? Yeah, one of the best movies of all time. Why, you guys? Because it's great. Oh. Yeah. It's a good ass movie. Channing Tatum is a phenomenal athlete. That act, that actor though, Alexander Pettifer, parked his car. Douche. Yeah, everyone says he's a douche. Yeah. He was on the Brady Snellis podcast and he talked about him, him and Channing Tatum weren't friends. Yeah, dude, I'm sure he's doing the heavy lifting in that of not being friends. <laughs> Channing Tatum's chill, dude. Channing Tatum, super chill. Super so chill. Fedora one time, I was like, that's oh, tight. Hell yeah, that's dude. tight. Yeah, it's not an accident. It looked tight. I think he was like a D1 caliber athlete too. Yeah, wasn't he like a tight end? Wide receiver. Love it. And he's like a proper six deuce, two bills. Oh, he's a big boy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he gets too big. He does. When well, I saw him in the fedora, a little too big. Jupiter Ascending, he's shirtless the whole oh, time. And he's, he's kind of paunchy. I'm like, bro, you're kind of like an action movie star. I need you to be cut. Dude, you know what I was thinking? Braveheart? Yes. I think Braveheart is the best casted movie I've ever seen. I love what you're saying right now. Please expound. Okay, because look at like... Longshanks, mm -hmm. is there a more English kingly evil feeling guy? No. His little weak son, you know, this goes beyond the orientation. Like right. you do kind of want to smack him right when you see he, him. He's weasily. I mean, he yeah. gets pigeonholed into. If you see yeah, movie, skip all that part. But yeah, he, his innate sensibility is. is you kind of want to smack him around. Yeah. Um, Brendan Gleeson, Brendan Gleeson's dad, the Irish dude, but then even like smaller parts like. Uh, the torturer, what are those guys called? Uh, the executioner guy? The executioner. The gray-haired guy? Like, that guy is oh, he's the so perfect executioner. Yes. I just think, you know, whoever did casting for that movie, they nailed the look and feel of each one of those characters so well. They really did. It's, they should have won an award for that if there isn't one. They should do that. They should do that as an Oscar. Best casting. Because some movies they do, they just drill it. For, like, Lincoln had really good casting. Brilliant mm -hmm. casting. Joseph Gordon-Levitt to be his boyish type son. That was a tough yeah. part. Yeah. He's so obnoxious in it. He's just a bitch. Mm -hmm. But I think he was really like that. And I think he was the only surviving son. Lincoln's son was a bitch. Robert. He had like five kids and they all died besides one. That's like why yeah. uh, Mary Todd went kind of crazy. Oh, yeah, that'll man. do it to you. Yeah. Back then too, it's pretty common, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not fun. You just come downstairs and they're like, we lost another one last night. Yeah, oh, like dude. one got hit by a train, I think. Uh, really? Yeah, I think so. And then I think Mary Todd had some predispositions, though. But. Guys, welcome back to the Stoke Hour. Yeah, dude. Yeah. What up, dude? What up? <laughs> well, We're all going through break. Oh, it's going to be a bummer off. for a while. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, should, oh, we, uh, oh. should we answer some questions? People have been asking for more questions. Really? Yeah. By the way, I got the Gonzaga thing. Oh, St. Gonzaga. I thought it was of Dutch. Of what is it? Oh, yeah, it is. That uh, makes sense. Yeah, that okay. ties back Christian straight into story. our uh, first topic on the pod. What was that? Molesters. Right. Bring it back, dude. <laughs> Joe, what kind of socks are those? Everyone talks about that. Uh, these are just uh, Adidas white. Nice. nice. I gave you some socks. I decided to have some for you, too, on the couch. And uh, I don't have any for you right now. You but brought I will socks? Get you some more. Whoa. Yeah. Baylor's up 17. Yeah, I just saw. It's 31-14. Hopefully Gonzaga comes back. I want to see Mark Few get one. Damn. Uh, it's hard, it's hard sometimes when you have it. yeah, you have an emotional win like that too over UCLA, you kind of get I don't know. You think the magic's gonna happen, but you, you don't it's not magic. You get to work for it. Um All right, dudes. Almost got thrown off a horse. Oh dude, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it started it started moving on you, right? I went to, because you haven't been on, in a saddle, and I get, I get in the saddle maybe twice a year, and my freaking IT band was getting super tight. Mm -hmm. So I take my right leg. You got to work that fascia, dog. Dude, I do. I need you to show me how to do that. And uh, I will. I was like, you know what? I thought about it, taking my leg out of the stirrup, my, heel, my foot out of the stirrup, and stretching it alongside the horse, like kind of up by its neck. But I was like, that's not a good idea. I was like, and I've got enough room to operate in these stirrups. I'm going to go ahead and just raise my leg up a little bit, lean and stretch a little bit. And it got in the peripheral peripheral vision of the horse, which I think just spooked the shit out of it. It was like, what uh -huh. the fuck is that shoe doing that close to me? 
boom, the thing starts bolting, gets 20 yards like in the blink of an eye. Wow. Dude, kind of jumped up a little bit, but luckily JT gave me some 35s and I was fucking dialed in, dude, squeezing with my groin. Nice. So I never felt like I was going to get thrown off, but I definitely thought if he wanted to keep running, there's no way I'm stopping this horse. Oh, nice. No way. Do you want to do a triple-double after the pod? What's the triple? Oh, the uh, CrossFit workout? I can't right now because I've had these things. I'm doing the Man Makers tomorrow. So how, how, how long did the horse run for? Not too long. It probably got 25 yards. Okay. Yeah. That's a good distance. It's pretty solid. Yeah, it's but real quick. Scary. Dude, I, I, if your running back pulls off a run like that in fantasy football, you're pretty stoked. You're happy. Dude, I was loping on a horse. I mean, when you're loping, when you see it versus when you're on top of the horse, totally different. Because you see someone, you're like, oh, that looks pleasant. But then when you're on there, it's just like, you're like, oh, my oh, fuck, dude. They're like, yeah, you're just loping. Bro, yeah. This is, yeah. A, it was a, this is a quarter horse that I was on, which is typical. And yeah. I mean, they can probably reach 30 miles per hour. Yeah. And I talked to the guy. He's like, dude, 10 miles per hour on a horse feels like insane. Right. And, and I was probably going less than that. Loping? Loping's like, I think it's the one, it, you know, it goes like trotting, loping, galloping. So loping is in between trotting it's and like galloping. A medium speed. Medium, yeah. Well, a, a trot's very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Like a trot, you're kind of bouncing. Yeah, lope t- loping's more smoother for There's sure. a rhythm to it. Yeah, and I think with galloping, I, I mean, you're, more of an, you're more of an equestrian, but I, don't you sort of stay still in the saddle and it moves? Yeah, I was never you? great. I, I learned by just like, being on it and holding on it and i was so yeah. little i would just bounce around and i just got used to that right but i do think when you're at a lope you're kind of like a little above the saddle and you're just getting that contact when you hit yeah but i never learned how to like they call it posting i i, I try to learn how to do that effectively i got the worst scab on my butt really i remember i was practicing it because i was so bad at sports my dad was like just looking for anything i could do yeah and he's like here you're gonna learn how to cowboy and rope yeah and then i get there all the dudes are missing fingers from yeah. when they throw it around the, the bull and then they put it around the horn and their fingers get pulled off. And I was like, okay. And then this really beautiful woman who was at like a neighboring high school taught me how to ride. And then after a week, my butthole was too damaged to continue. Nice. Mm. Dude, it gets your, uh, what's, where are the muscles in here? Kegels. I feel like it gets your Kegels nice and tight. Cause Mm. every time I ride, I'll, I'll be sore in my Kegel area. I'm like, dude, nice. Nice. Yeah. Get take a cack. You can have a nice tight snatch. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I tried sunning my balls this weekend. Did you really? Yeah. Just your balls. Yeah, because they're like... drop them out of your shorts? Like so your everything shorts? else yeah. was covered and just your balls were exposed? <laughs> yep. You were wearing Interesting. jeans. I was standing in my backyard, because uh, it was kind of chilly, so it was shirt with a shirt on and just my pants down to my knees. You were like Frost and Blade when they killed the one vampire and they were wearing helmets and like suits all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> but instead of you holding a vampire, you're just holding your nuts out. Yeah. <laughs> post breakup so i was like hopefully she doesn't come over right now and be like i think we should talk again <laughs> <laughs> well your neighbors yeah, she wants to hook up and you're like my balls are too sunburned to bone yeah so like, what are you doing i'm like i'm trying to boost my testosterone by 200 percent. how do they come up with these numbers they're just you know dudes on instagram yep 200 percent sounds better than 100 percent. so that's why yeah 100 yeah. percent. <laughs> are you dudes ready for some cues Hell yeah. What's up, Savants of Stoke? I'm a 23-year-old faithful listener of the pod. I've even gotten the opportunity to bag on Warzone with Chad and the Schmoll. This is Marshall. Hell yeah. And I joined a new gym where there's a lady who has caught my eye. She works out at the same time I do most days during the week. The question I have for you is, how do I approach this beautiful babe at the gym? I know it's generally taboo to make a move on girls like this, but I feel like sometimes you just have to go for it. I don't have any current ladies in my life, and seeing her fills my stoke tank. It hypes me up more than any pre-workout ever could. It's been almost a year since the last time I've been in a relationship. Any advice on how to approach this would be awesome. I obviously don't want to be a creep. I need to do this in a way that radiates stoke. Keep up the good work. I love you guys. Sincerely, The Big Marsh. Yeah, I think I would get fired up if she's doing an exercise. Yes, I was like, thinking the same get, thing. Yeah, get fired up on it. Be like, dude, nice squat. And just get be like, I like your mobility. You know, yeah, you, mobility, just gotta, I like your, you just got to like, go for it. Yeah, I like yeah. your technique. Then you just strike up the conversation. And trade details. Be like, hey, like, yeah. do you like to put your feet outward or put them in a little right. bit? Yeah, yeah, do you go yeah. shoulder width apart? Yeah, and just be genuinely interested in her uh, lifting methodology. Yeah. Like, don't you just love doing legs? Someone came out to me like that, like super stoked, and was like, "Dude, don't you just love doing legs?" I'd be like, "Yeah, I do." Yeah, 
And first of all, this guy sounds like a huge pervert. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> dude, I would say I wouldn't do it during the workout, to be honest with you. While they're in the, in the middle of it? Well, yeah, yeah. not when she's mid-set. Or even during on the floor. Uh, mm. Really? On the floor, you're on the floor. Wow, so you really respect is that I'm is sacred from. time. I don't want to be talked to. Like I, I would run into my buddy at the gym a lot, and I like the guy, great guy. Sometimes we're talking too much. I want to get in, I want to get out. 45 minutes, I want to hit my things. I hate when I got to like wait on a machine. And right. well, So could he just What's say, hey, look, about? I don't want to take too much of your time. Like, should, could, he, could he throw in a, uh, a qualifier like that? I mean, he could, but it's like, I just don't think that serves him best. I think you got to catch her at either the smoothie bar or before the workout starts. You got to catch it in that area, in the lobby. Yeah, oh, yeah area. maybe figure out when about when you think she's about finished and maybe mm-hmm. hang out mm-hmm. by the women's locker room. Don't, don't you think if he's like waiting there and he's, <laughs> he sees well, no, but he's that's doing a workout no, still no, to the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're doing an exercise. Exactly. You cannot be waiting. You cannot be seen waiting. You, you have to, you have to finagle that. Here, I, I've got, I've got something that meets you halfway. So, cause I, what if she's like just done a bunch of squats and she's like, you know, when they walk around, they do that little rest kind of thing. Mm-hmm. If during that to be like, dude, nice squats or whatever start building rapport and then over a few days maybe over a few weeks you got you see each other and you're like hey what's up and then you finally strike it and then when he sees her at the smoothie bar he's like natalie she's like hey doing squats today I'm like i don't know well we should do squats at uh dantana's i like it yeah I like building incrementally too. Yeah. I think sometimes we go into situations where we're like, all right, I gotta, I gotta really get it all out this first time. It's like yeah. you just go up and be like, hey, nice, nice work on those squats. Yeah. And then you keep it moving. Yeah. Then a week later, maybe you add one more sentence to it, and then you, you know, yeah. low and slow. Low and slow. Here's how you do it. You gotta know. You gotta, you gotta be a weasel. You gotta know she's going to the. You just saw her finish triceps. You know she's gonna go lower body after that. She's been alternating. Yeah. Let's be honest, Marshall. You've watched her workout a lot. You know she's going to go to the squat rack. You go there as well. Maybe you put your towel down. She comes up to it, doesn't see it. You go, oh, I had that. She goes, oh, no, I'll go away. You go, oh, no, 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 no. You take it. It's all good. I might go do this anyway. It's a natural, quote, organic, and I put it in quotes because it's an absolutely manufactured moment of you, quote, one, being a nice guy, and it creates an organic talk. Because if you interrupt someone, I don't know. When I'm finishing a, a, a lift, I like that moment of my own headspace when I'm right. with. I don't want anyone yeah. interjecting. Now, if it's a cute girl and Marshall's a good-looking guy, maybe that's a different scenario. But maybe but she's getting bothered a lot at the gym that's too. What I'm saying, if it's maybe a, cute a girl, lot of fellers are coming up and like, hey, like yeah. this and that. Maybe you go exactly. up to yeah, respect the game. Maybe you yeah, go up to her and you gym. say, "Hey, can you Let spot me her. real quick?" Exactly. You ask her for a spot. Okay, a spot is that. And then you're doing tricep press downs on the cable, dude. Let's go. There's no way to spot that. Yep. And then she's like, "What am I doing over here?" And you're like, "Sorry." Just wanted to talk to you. That's what I'm talking about. Honestly, it's the most clever and fun way. You got a bones, Chad, dude. You got, Chad's wants bones off that. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude, let me tell you something. Is that how you do it? How do you bones? Uh, I was going like this. JT, oh, okay. I love that. You either be a weasel what do you, like you me. You say squid sometimes, right? Squid. What is that? It's, so when you go for a pound, but you squid them. Right. Go for a high five. Turkey. There you have it. I, okay, I, I like do that to her. Have her yeah. go for the bones and then flip her with the squid. Yeah, I like doing that. Doing a completely separate exercise. And you're like, what are you doing? I just wanted to talk to you. That's amazing. And then you shimmy. That's amazing. That's hey, fun. can you spot me? And then you do ten burpees. <laughs> <laughs> She's like trying to spot you. She's like, where do you want me to help you? She's like, this guy on YouTube told me to really, you know, to peacock. So here I am. Go up to me and be like, hey, I'm lacking motivation, but I really want to finish my last set. Could you watch me? And I think that'll fire me up so I go stronger. <laughs> and then you bench and you scream during every rep. Dude. Ah, do Dude. not fail! <laughs> Dude. She's... Show her who you are! <laughs> she's mid-rep of a squat, dude, or bench, which is even better. Pop champagne and go, I'm just celebrating our first anniversary a year early. <sighs> Here's some champagne. Walk into the gym in a tuxedo, that. walk straight up to her, say, hey dinner next week you and me she says yes <laughs> then you walk out yep nice. yep okay this is, guys this is a good one dick face dilemma what's up dudes <laughs> yeah big fan of the pod here listening weekly in ireland i wouldn't normally write an email like this nice. but we don't know where else to look for advice so my friend had a rager at his house last night which led to him passing out around the 4 a.m mark respectable a guy at the party who he kind of knows rubbed his dick on my friends the host passed out face while recording it and laughing in front of the whole party 
Total lack of respect or hilarious. Should my friend kick this guy's ass or give him props for being an opportunist? Totally stuck on this one, guys. Any advice is really appreciated. It's probably worth mentioning that we're 30 years old. <laughs> thanks for keeping us stoked. Yeah, thanks tough for lots of lockdowns that. here in Ireland. Much respect and stay stoked. Definitely I worth mentioning that you're 30, dude. Yeah. So to the first part, hilarious or lack of respect? It was the guy's house that got his Yeah, dick. he did it to the host. Oh, uh, yeah. I, Definitely uh, an added element of disrespect. Yeah. I would say this guy is... Um, at this point in his life to be doing something like that to someone he hardly knows or bear or doesn't know super well at their own home and recording it. I would say that this guy is, um, a sociopath yeah, and, yeah, um, should not be invited to any more Come social on. gatherings and, and maybe needs to be, people need to keep an eye out on this guy. Ban him from the Emerald Isle. I think so. Yeah. That's what they call Ireland. I love that. Oh, it's beautiful. Chad, you seem like you want to take the other side. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I, I just would like to know sort of the more of the dynamics of this squad, you know, if, if he really knew this guy, you know, cause if I, if I didn't, no, I don't buddy, think he did. If I did it to my buddy ass clown, I mm. think it was hilarious. Still, would yeah, you still do that to boy. ass clown? I, I'm not the type of guy that would do that, but I'm the type of guy that would watch and laugh. I uh, knew. It. So I, it's tough for me. It's tough for me to say, kick this guy's ass and kick him out of the friend group because I, can for sure tell you that I would watch and laugh hysterically if I saw it today. Guy. I think so. If you saw me teabag Joe today, oh dude, that'd be hilarious. No, you would not. You would tell me not to. <laughs> if you teabagged him, no way. Me? <laughs> That's funny. Chad loves bagging in Call of Duty, dude. Yeah, you guys do. I, I, I think you'd feel worse bagging. about it than you think you would. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe. I may I just, I just, I, I, I guess I just don't want to kick a party or when he's down. I don't know. Well, no, he's it's having true. the time of his life. He recorded the guy recorded it. Oh, he recorded this guy's it? a savage, dude. Yeah, he recorded yeah. it. Like that's yeah. a, yeah, a hate kind crime. Of, kind of blackmail. That's what I was gonna say. It's, it's no good. You can't do this as adults. I mean, you should never do this in the first place. This should never take place. It's wrong. But I understand when like a nineteen-year-old does it because they're nineteen <laughs> and stupid. And yeah. That's no excuse. I mean, what happened to drawing plenty dicks of... on the face? Not actually. Uh, yeah, but you gotta trace them. All right. Well, well the... and he also rubbed his dick. On the guy's face, like it wasn't yeah. when you teabag someone. One. When you when you teabag someone, you, which is bad enough, you put your balls, yeah. which I think is less intense than the dick, yeah. on the top of their head where they have like hair, no, and on not their a, forehead and, and into their eyes. Right, <laughs> right. Sorry, but this guy put dick on the like. When I hear face, I imagine like he's rubbing his dick on the guy's it's like disgusting. cheek. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's, it's no good. And dude, yeah, it's worth mentioning not, that you're thirty, bro. It's worth mentioning, yeah. dude. I, uh, no good. I, I have a question. Wait, so 30, yeah. unacceptable. What if they're like... Always unacceptable. Uh, just, I'm going hard Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. All right. What if they're like 65? And they're like, we just want to relive our old party days. No. The, if it's consensual. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if it's... A, if, Chad, if we're in a vacuum and someone's like, yo, you know, hey, Wade, uh, whatever like old dude's names are, like, hey, Wade... I'm gonna pass out tonight, Wait. and I'd like uh, I'd like Bud to fucking. I would enjoy if while I'm asleep and I don't know it, if you filmed your <laughs> penis on my face, if that was recorded in conjunction with the recording of the dick on the face, then you got the green light maybe. <laughs> but is that ever gonna happen? I don't know. I guess I was just thinking like relive the glory days. Like you go to a college reunion with your like 65 year old buddies, and it's like, dude, we gotta be like. Gotta relive college. Well, also imagine he said we're not that close with the guy, so we're all really good buddies. We have a party, and then let's who's someone who's like kind of on the peripheral, like uh, and oh. then who's a uh, Maddie Chimbor's friend Don, Don yeah. Don <laughs> DePetto, what's his name, the baseball coach? Yeah, Don. Don. What if Don came over and put his dick on? Strider's face. Yeah, that's a good point. And I filmed it. I wouldn't like it. I, I like Don you know, too, but I'm just saying, like you know, we 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 haven't hung out. I never I've hung met out this with him guy. Like twice. Yeah, and he's at my house. Maybe that's yeah. the scenario. He's at your house. <laughs> Maybe I'm just having a tough time no differentiating yeah. between just like the the description and also the actual action. Because I'm sure if I saw the action, I'd be like, all right, that's that's not chill. Yeah, you would laugh. And, and in this case, sure. if it put on your face, uh, that's not cool. Would we laugh? Let me ask you, Chad, when you're describing yeah, seeing the funny. action, I don't think we'd laugh. You're describing it already seeing it taking place. Right. People have to be like, like, who's the guy who just does, uh, like, I imagine this guy was like, I'm putting my dick on there. And then people have to like cheer for it. And so it's a very different scenario. Right. You think people were like, cheering? Like, 
I, I bet you there were some guys there cheering that yeah. came on to do that for sure. Maybe he was a It'd be self. a really strange scenario if he was like, I'm going to put my penis on the face. Everyone said no. Everyone's silent. And he's like, yeah. Everyone's yeah. silent while he just goes, does it. And just fucking just stares in everyone's eye. Yeah, that's no good. Um, all right. Here's the situation, homies. This one's from a, a lady stoker. What up, Chad? And what up, JT? I have a bit of a situation with this dude I like. I really like him, but there is one problem. He has a GF. We are bros, but I don't know what to do about this situation. I'm looking at the Stoke Lords for advice. Should I remain silent or should I tell him how I feel? I'd like to remain anonymous. Thanks for helping a homie out, potato chips. Please get back to me ASAP. Dude, what up? Uh, or my lady, what up? I think we need more information, but at the same time, I don't think we need more information. He has a GF. I think you have to do the right thing just karmically and not because if you contribute to them breaking up I think you'll carry some residual bad feelings about it that might manifest itself in negative ways down the road like there will always be that maybe a little bit of original sin in your head so I would just go live your life and honestly if he sees you doing that it'll probably if he feels the same way about you it'll incite him to to break up in, in a more noble way where you don't have to participate in the the cause of it yeah directly does that make sense yeah totally yeah sounds good to me yeah yeah i think it's sacred ground so i you know it's tough it's a tough situation to be in very tough yeah i feel for her but um major need of advice hey bros hope you're having a super dope day thanks for all the stoke you bestow upon our nation my happiness frequency thanks you i'm a long time listener but first time writer your advice has always been on point and this is something i don't want to ask one of my homies for a number of reasons long story short this girl i've been seeing recently opened up to me no pun intended about her desire for butthole pleasures we have talked yeah. in the past about our sexual experiences yeah. and she did mention that she has done it but i thought it was just for the stickin i had no idea she was also about the lickin as well doggy style on a whole new level as much as i didn't want to tongue punch her fart box i'm gonna go with the flow dude for the most part and want to please my lady so yeah. yolo it wasn't awful but i wouldn't line up to keep at it that's for sure better than kombucha though that's for sure here's where shit turned she then insisted that she licked my ass and that i would love it after declining the offer multiple times and seeing her pretty bum being pretty bummed out i let her have her go I wasn't a fan of that shit one bit, and now I can't help but see her differently. In the span of minutes, I went from adoring this girl to being creeped the fuck out. I'm truly not a bad guy, which is why I let her lick my ass in the first place so she wouldn't feel embarrassed or anything. But every time I close my eyes, I literally see her sitting down eating a Ben & Jerry's shit-flavored ice cream with the poop emoji pose. Come on, bro. What should I do to move on from this? She is still a great, awesome girl, and nothing like that changes. But she let me in on one of her quirks, and now I'm just super grossed out, which makes this all the worse that she opened up to me. Don't know what to do so I don't hurt her feelings. Please help. Dude, quit bragging, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I don't know. It's No, no, dude. Just tell her you're uncomfortable with it. Yeah. And just talk it out. Yeah, I wouldn't judge her so harshly for being into it. Look, everyone's yeah. kinks are weird yeah. to other people, and they only make sense to us, but... It's totally normal. It's cool that she likes eating butt. I think nice you should you be let pretty her have excited. Her go, yeah, though, as you say, I had my butt yeah. eaten once let and I didn't love go. it, but I was actually, I thought the girl was really cool for doing that. I was like, "You're a really nice lady for giving that a whirl." Yeah, yeah, of course. And and if he's not into it, that's also fair on him. You just guys are you guys are on a different page, so you just got to let her know and and say, "Hey, I don't, I'm not exactly into this. I know you enjoy it." You know, he, you like her otherwise, but, you know, if things aren't clicking in the B room, the bedroom, it's a big part of the relationship, so. But I also think a big part, like, and look, someone can be too weird for sure, but, you know, I think the B room, a lot of what makes it good is open lines of communication and lack of judgment. Totally. And, and you know, you're, you're halfway there. You're communicating honestly, and it's cool she felt comfortable enough with you to talk about that openly. But I, I would try hard to, like, detach from the judgment a little bit and just see what that if you can do that yeah totally because because who knows i mean if she's down to do that she's probably a pretty open-minded person and you guys might have a really good time together so i would try not be i wouldn't i wouldn't image associate yeah yeah, yeah. but it's hard not to do yeah yeah i love butthole stuff so you know i understand where she's coming from mm -hmm. if it turns you on it turns you on it's like you don't really have 
power over that, you know. Totally. And, and she was being honest. I would say to him too, if there's what, what's your weird kink? You know, because if you got one, let it out. Start establishing that that right that bond a little bit. Um, Do you guys think everyone has a weird kink? No. no. We were talking about no. this on comps. I don't think I really have a weird kink. You don't know it yet. Yeah, I think you do. Yeah, you so do. you think everyone has a weird kink? No, I think you do. Really? Yeah. yeah. What do you think it is? I think it's sick. No, I don't, <laughs> what do you do? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I, I don't know. No, I honestly don't think you do. But I, I think I think if you... Stand I think it's okay sex. not to. I think you probably... Yeah, like of course. Of course, yeah. yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, so you actually do like stand-up sex? Laying down. Yeah, I enjoy stand-up sex. <laughs> like where you're picking up the other person? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It's nice. Why are your eyes so alive right now? Because I like it. I thought about it. I, I just I had a mental image of it, and I was enjoying it. <laughs> You're a beast, bro. I love that, dude. Lock in on me like that. Um, <laughs> no, I, th- I think you probably do have something, yeah, that's still undiscovered. But Maybe. I'm, I know you're going to get there. Maybe. Maybe not. We all have a metaphorical Everest of... Of kink, you know? No, maybe not. I think. Do you think I, this guy has something? Everest. What I'm saying is, do you think this guy is just more of a vanilla? Like, does he enjoy missionary style boning, and that's fine? And he maybe might. he likes doggy he style, might, whatever. Yeah. That's not crazy. That's true. Yeah, and we we shouldn't like we shouldn't say like we shouldn't say one way is better than the correct. other. There's only your own truth. Yeah, I do think yeah. he shouldn't judge her for what she likes. You know, for sure. And I wouldn't let that judgment turn him off to whatever his kinks are. So I think shame should be out of it, and I think he does have a dose of shame in here. But I'm also saying, if he's not into butthole stuff, he doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to do it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Of course not. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. Uh, I would maybe just tell her in a non-judgmental, open, honest way. You know, I don't like it, but I respect that you like it. That's what you're here into. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I want to make the B room a special place for us both. So let's work this out. But with you, yeah, I think. Uh, you think I've got? I think you're a bondage guy. <laughs> no, I, I, I could see. I could see you tied up with a gag ball in your mouth. Maybe a gimp mask. Yeah. <laughs> I could get, a I could gimp get mask. A gimp mask and your tongue darting. <laughs> That's the only thing exposed. Is just this. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else leather, dude. <laughs> <laughs> who is that dude dude that's strider dude it's me strider what, what up, up dude, dude? <laughs> cutting loose sorry yeah dude, i just having a dank ipa yeah, before man. i get into it tonight just a little afternoon delight don't worry about it <laughs> just, just a 102 outside just in full leather <laughs> do you always get uh tongue dart in a gimp mask oh yeah dude it's the best brings it alive really keeps my boner from popping yeah i like that <laughs> really spices up the engagement <laughs> Nice, dude. You just walk around. You do like a story, like, "What up, dude? Look at this credenza." (laughs) It's Strider. You have your mullet coming out the back. That'd be sick. I know this thing's disgusting now, dude. Dude, I love it, man. Thank you. I I I love it too. I think you look like you could work at uh, Bear Flag right now. You for real? I'm, I'm, I'm for real. I haven't even logged any, you know, hours in the water polo practice. Yeah, I feel like too. you gotta have water polo practice to work at Bear Flag. It's like on top of the resume. Not you with that cheese. Thank you. All right, what up, Council of Stoke? First off, I want to thank Chad for introducing me to ice baths and cryotherapy. I have not built my first ice bath yet, as I do not have the space, but I begin each morning now with a very cold swim in Lake Union in Seattle. I originally tried cold showers after hearing you talk about them on the pod, and I love the effect that cold water exposure is having on my energy and overall Stoke. Now to the important stuff. I'm a senior member of the squad morph into a schmoll. This dude used to be a master of stoke and an inspiration to us all and is now becoming a finance bro who will only talk about his own salary or how much money he should be making. He uses business jargon all the time and it's starting to affect the squad. This dude that used to be a fun-loving party god is now consumed with his own financial success. He's constantly talking about scalable capital assets or smart content market optimization. The rest of the squad are successful dudes. We just don't fixate on talking about our own fields of work and how successful we are in them. You know that bit that Strider does about crushing deals? That's this dude for real. We miss talking with him about real stuff, from random normal conversations to deep intellectual subjects. We all don't want to hang out with this dude anymore, but we feel guilty and want to honor the fact that he's been a member of our squad for many years. Do we tell this dude he's becoming a schmoll and that we miss how he used to be, or do we accept the change in his behavior as his new personality? The schmoll-like behavior really began to change about two years ago, so this is not a recent thing. Thank you for your guidance. Oh, that, that, that last sentence... 
bum me out because I thought it was just might be just a phase. Like you start working in finance, you're all of a sudden wearing like Gucci loafers, and it's like your thing. But because I was like, ah, it'll probably pass, but two years. Maybe he thinks he's impressing all of them. I don't know. He's trying to be a big shot. Yeah, big shot of the group. Do you know what I would do? I wouldn't say a word to him, and I just talk trash on him when he's not around. That's easy. Yeah, that's the easiest move here. I think they're already doing that. It's just just, just let him let him go through, dude. He'll circle back around. Yeah. He'll figure it out after a couple of years. But I mean, what are you gonna do? He's probably pretty happy being into that shit. And uh, you know, it's not like an unhealthy thing. It's just he's a bit too self-involved. But I don't know. That's a, that's a, it's a hard conversation to say to someone. I this is our friend Andrew is much more open, so you could you could talk to him about things like this. But he's always been very. Um, uh, invested in like music festivals, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember one time we were talking, and he was like talking about Coachella and stuff. And I was like, hey, "Hey, Andrew, you might have to just realize that not everybody cares about Coachella as much as you do." Yeah, and nobody, dude. <laughs> dude, the freaking hurt in his nobody eyes does. when I said that yeah, to yeah. him. He was it, 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 it cut him deep. I, it was like I, I, I felt like I had like. But he's a good sport. He can roll with it. But this guy doesn't yeah. seem to be. And that's that's Andrew to his credit. He's he's very uh, open to talking about anything. And this, this dude's probably not like that. But I don't know. What yeah. do you guys think? I mean, I, I think you're spot on. It's the same sort of talk. Like, dude, we're fired up for you. We're glad you're making money. But like, shut up. Yeah. We want yeah. to talk about other stuff, dude. That can work. There's always guys who are good at busting balls and they can do it in a light way where they yeah. don't even have to be too sincere about it, where they won't even be like, hey, dude, can I talk to you? Like, can you stop caring so much about your job? Like, that wouldn't work. But there are some guys who are like, oh, here goes Jackson again. Well, well yeah. shut the fuck up about derivatives. Totally. Yeah, and then all you guys laugh really that. hard and yeah. you guys all go, ah, ha, 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 ha. And then he's like, huh? Yeah, yeah. he's got to see yeah. the writing on the wall at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all that you got to do. And then if he fires back, he's like, fuck you guys. You guys are just jealous because then you go, all right, bro. Now you're like too far. Exactly. Yeah, now you're 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 gripping it too tight. But yeah. I know, that's a tough yeah. one. I, I agree with all that. I, I think uh, bust his balls. Because yeah. it's not like something, he's not hurting anyone. He's just being annoying. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think he just busts his balls, give him a little shot, you know, just some, just check him a little bit. Maybe you know he'll dent his ego a little bit. He'll he'll start deflating. I like that. If only he was into like. If only he had a cool porno career. Right. You know, and he was always talking about like that. Like busting loads. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was dude. playing a plumber and I busted a load. Nice. I think there's something too about cool. when your when your friend is like really into making money. It can feel a. Uh, it does, especially for when you've known each other for a long time. It can alienate. It's kind of braggadocious. Yeah, and it feels it feels very like egocentric, you know, Ooh. where you're like, oh, this guy oh, has right. to be like the top, top dog, and like he he can't really just chill. Yeah. And so that can kind of throw people off when they're not in that same mindset. But but again, like at the end of the day, it's not like a bad thing. It's just when you've known someone for so long, you don't like to see them kind of become uh a one dimensional kind of uh person that way. Yeah. Yeah. It only mm -hmm. really works if you're talking about busting loads yeah yeah if he's like look i got a daily rate 800 bucks and i busted a fat load that's cool tell me more right you know i'd love to hear that yeah i don't want to hear about you know a sling and how rope. volatile the market was today at closing like, people yeah, get yeah. I, I i my brother one time was like he's like do you just talk about chicks too much now he's like all you do is talk about chicks i was like it's like five years ago i was like fuck dude yeah yeah it can he's be. like he's like he's like he's like it's made my girlfriend and like her friends think you're just like a horn dog. Basically. Oh yeah, you better watch. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, damn. I was like, but I like to read and shit. He's like, you don't really read anymore. <laughs> He's like, you're just horny all the time. <laughs> I was like, oh god. Yeah. But it also I, was kind of like maybe your time catching up with him. But that's they're all true. around. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. guys weren't going out to a bar together, one on one, where you could get that out, clear the hopper with that. Right. I'm coming over like once every three weeks, and I'm just doing and a everyone's heavy down around. Round. Right. But. Yeah, it's tough yeah. to say how this dude will take it. I don't think anyone's ever had a conversation like that with someone who talks about busting loads. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I think you're right. But honestly, one time I saw our same buddy Andrew one time. <laughs> yeah. I think we may have told a story before, but he was like, he would just tell like boning stories. And right, like, right. When we right. were like 19, we we're like, that's cool. And then after a while, we'd be like, dude, shut up. Yeah. Well, he would, com I, he would complain like, about it too. He, he did that classic thing that yeah. guys who get laid a lot do. Where, and I understand 
from their vantage point, it's valid. But he's like, bro, I'm exhausted. And he's like, I'm just too fucking tired, bro. And I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, dude, fucking Denise came over and like we fucked. And then she was like begging to do it again. And I was like, fine. So I fucked her twice. And then I'm like, just so beat now. Yeah, fuck And I'd you. be like, I'd be like, dude. <laughs> dude, then I had to get head. Yeah. yeah. Suck. And he's yeah. like, just to calm her Could down. Hard. Yeah. He's like, then I was late to work. And then now I got to go have sex with this other girl. Yeah. And I'm like. All right, bro. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was like, I was like, I know it's a problem for you, but like for me, I just keep, I have no empathy. For and then at the yeah. end of the day, he's like, dude, can I borrow fifteen hundred, dude? I'm back on rent. You're like, come here, dude. Come here, dude. <laughs> Fuck her, dude. All right. Um, what's up, dudes? I am friends with this awesome girl, and I would like to ask her to prom. The problem is that I've never done something like this before, and also she turned down four different guys last year for prom before Whoa. deciding she was going to go with a senior who is one of her family friends. Dude, I like how discerning this Savage. lady is. Yeah. I work with her dad at his store delivering stuff. This is a great movie already. We are also in the same friend group and get along well. How should I ask her to prom without her thinking I want to date her? I know that you guys have given some fire ideas on how to ask people to dances. So if you could lay some of your sage wisdom on me, I would forever be in your debt. Also, I have been struggling with acne for the past couple of years and don't have the highest self-confidence. Any tips? Well, don't worry about that, dude. Acne. I've known some dudes who had really bad acne who were like, beast with the ladies because i think it's just like if you can be confident in the face of that it's actually a gift you know what i mean and then mm -hmm. for yeah, prom they, don't, they won't touch them rent a dirt they bike must. drive it over to her house bring an extra helmet say hop on i want to show you something then if she's like no be like all right well i just rented the dirt bike because i wanted to ask you to prom but don't worry i'm not trying to hook up with you i just want to go as friends love it yeah, i love that that's pretty cool uh i love uh, involving live animals get mm -hmm. a bunch of rabbits mm -hmm. put a note on them Hey, I'd love for you to hop on my motorcycle and cruise to prom with me, something like that. A little pun. Love that. Dude, I mean, you just fired me up because maybe a combo of the two. Mm. Pull up shirtless on a horse. Oh. And you greet her like a knight. Say, my lady. Fair tidings. Uh, would you... And then you ask her to prom or you ask her on the back of your horse. You take her along like the bluffs overlooking the ocean. You pop the quesh. Yes. And then, uh, and then you have a wine and cheese. Ass or you were probably in high school. Then you have a Lacroix and cheese assortment yes. ready to go. Yes. Nice. And you yes. guys dine. And then you have Strider come in in a gimp suit <laughs> and show you what you're going to be doing on prom night, dude. Strider, please demonstrate. I got a rule for kids. This isn't a rule, but. Just say yes when someone asks you to prom. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. The first person that asked, you just got to say yes. Yeah, I kind of like that she said no to four people. It's pretty though. unbelievable, And four guys dude. tried. You know what I mean? Like, I know. That sounds like a movie, too. Yeah. It's Runaway Bride-ish. Um, dude, you can also play her the music Soul Child song, Just Friends. I think that'll work for her. It's a good song. Great. It's uh, laid back, but still a little romantic. All right, dude, should we get into the next? Do you want to do some ads, chat, and then we'll get into the next bit? Yeah. I think I think also you should find out. Um, I think also you should find out where she's getting out of class, you know, because if she's rejecting dudes, you got a cool guy here, like you don't care, you know? Throw on a leather jacket, some shades, maybe get like a, a, fake, a cig, but don't light it. And just, you know, one uh, one foot up against the wall as she comes out of class. And you're like, Jessica. She's like, what? And you're like, never mind. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to go to prom? I love Boom. that. <laughs> Boom. I love it. I kind of just like to say that stuff to, <laughs> so you can just Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm envisioning react. the whole thing. I love it. Because <laughs> I think I kind of bombed at the end of that. But I think it was a good setup. Then. Well, because I don't really know how to execute after that. Well, it's tough because you're probably thinking you built up such a great scenario. The question should have been, "Will you marry me?" But it ended right, up just being, right. "Just will you go to prom?" Yeah, I just didn't really it was know too how, good how of a scenario. Could, yeah, it should play out. But I think, yeah, it was too sick. Yeah, maybe you can figure out the rest. Yeah. Okay. Does cameo blow up from prom season? Cameo, oh, probably. Yeah, Aaronson, you could get a good cameo from someone. Brian oh, Scalabrini. Yeah. Or the oh, guy from The Office. Yeah. The guy from The Office is like a billionaire off Cameo. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, he's busting out like oh, 6,000 of them a day or something. Crazy. Guys, I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dongs are looking fresh. 
and clean because you got a dong or a vagina and you got pubes. What are you going to do with those? That's where Manscaped come in, comes in. This is the first company in the world to be dedicated to your pubes. How many salons are there? How many, you know, how many supercuts are there? Tons, but you know what? There's only one company for your pubes, and that's Manscaped. And they're here to look after you because they've got the perfect package 3.0 kit. Comes with the essential lawnmower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer, a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. The best trimmer on the market for your hedges. And I'm talking about your pubes. With advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. Uh, when you trim the edges, the tree stands taller. Inside the perfect package, you'll also find the Manscaped Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant, making sure your balls are smelling majestic before your Tinder date. You'll also find the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, a spray-on testy toner. It's designed to make your balls smell irresistible. I've tried it, and um, I could smell my balls from the distance. Uh, you get refined cologne to add to your arsenal, the shed travel bag, patented high-performance reduced chafing Manscaped boxers, Need I say more? Here's what else I'll say. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP20 at manscaped.com. Nice. Chad. Thank you, Aaron. Beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely. Joe, clap for me, please. (laughs) Sorry. Good reading. (laughs) Thanks. Um, Chad, who's your beef of the week? <clears throat> My beef of the week is uh, the husbands or boyfriends of famous TikTokers. Oh, nice. Have you seen these guys on a, you know, it's like a, a famous no. TikToker she'll, that's married. She'll be doing the video and she'll be forcing this poor guy to like play a role. But it, but it's, it's very. Um, they, one of the famous ones just broke up. Really? Yeah. It's very uh, emasculating to watch. Oh, oftentimes, Because yeah. they're like, they're like, you know, uh, they'll, they'll like lip sync or whatever. Like they'll lip sync a scene from a movie. And they'll make this poor guy. You, could, you can just see that he doesn't want to be playing out this scene. But she's forcing him to do it. She, and they're playing out this movie. It's like when Babe, when, uh, you know, when Babe goes on vacation, they play out this scene. Yeah. And this poor guy. And I'm like, I'm like, dude. I don't know, man. It just bothers me. I'm just like, or they they say Bay, B A E. Yeah, when when you know, it's just like before anyone else. Yeah, and it's just like, is that what that means? I think so. Who's your beef, Chad? Is your beef with the person, the guy doing it, or the person making them do it? Yeah, with the guy doing it, with with uh, with allowing himself to be sort of a pawn in this in this TikTok game that they're playing, you know. And I've had people, all people, you know, stories and stuff, but. Never to that extent of like, I'm going to emasculate you in front of the masses. You know what I mean? Yeah. I try to make it you know, more empowering to whoever's in that story. Yeah. Maybe go more Tony Robbins style, like roar like a tiger. Right. Right. I, I do sometimes like when, um, like when someone will talk about their partner and then be like, and then dumb, dumb over here. Right. And yeah. I'm like, don't they work for NASA? Yeah, I, I hate that one. I, hate, I think like exactly too. When, when, like, yeah, when people like they talk about, they're just like, uh, yeah, this idiot over here. Well, it's the, the old uh, sitcom. It's the old That's sitcom. what it is. Yeah, yeah. and you, that you learn that like so early in acting class. They're like, hey, so if you're playing a sitcom husband, remember you're like dumb, hungry, horny, and you like sports. Yep. And I was like, look, I relate to all those things, yeah. but yep. in between those things, there's a lot of personality here. But what's always funny about that is that in acting class, when you had to play a loving husband, I was always good at it because I don't actually have a wife. And then all the dudes who actually had wives, they would always sound so pissed off in their wife scenes. Right. <laughs> like they'd be like, Amazing. all right, so come home and like your wife messed up dinner. And I'd be like, babe, did you overcook the lasagna again? And then the guy who's actually married would be like, babe, did you overcook the lasagna again? <laughs> <laughs> and you could just feel this. <laughs> The reality of it. I had that in an improv class. This Italian guy. 
immediately resorts to violence. He's like, where are the meatballs? And you're like, whoa. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so, so my beef is with those dudes. Like, you know, uh, make your own TikTok and do the videos you want to do or something like that. You know, or just say, like, put up a video on their account. Be like, hey, I know I play this dipshit in these lip syncs for my wife, but I do own a bunch of stock. So smart. I remember one guy I knew was always in his girlfriend's videos and I could tell it was starting to get to him. And then like he put out like a video of him, like throwing a spear. (laughs) (laughs) It was a big time overcorrection. He was like, here's a video of me throwing a spear. Those guys should just have a TikTok account called like the reverse angle. And it's just their faces while those videos go on, like play that song or whatever. And they're just like, deathly unhappy how, how many hits 23 million yeah oh great yeah you almost don't want it to work yeah you just start tanking your performance yeah yeah you'll do that sometimes when i pick them you with too many you'll just start tanking them like when you're done yeah well i just get tired and yeah it's hard <laughs> answering questions i respect it I'm like, what's Joe, the most you guys have ever done in a day yeah or like like in a continuous like like two hours worth of questions no. in a row? No, we, we hit them pretty quick, right? Maybe 10 or so. 10 hours? 10 questions or 10 picks. Mm. That's yeah. fast. Um, croutons or buoys? Buoys. Nice. For surfers, yeah, I gotta be, watch out. Hell yeah! Oh, nice, <laughs> Joe. Uh, what? Yeah, ask him one. Take your time, too, because I can edit it. Okay, cool. Uh, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Cinnamon toast crunch or scissors. Ooh. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh wow! So you can't cut anything anymore? No, no. You just use there's bo- a lot of use box cutters, a lot of sharp and... objects you can use. Yeah. Interesting. Strider, do you have one for him? Joe. Sex. Nice. Or boosting cars. Boosting cars. Yeah. Stealing them. S- sex. He would never steal a car. What about sex while boosting cars? Oh. No. Would you ever steal a car? Or steal a movie called Gone in 60 no, Seconds? Not a thief. <laughs> right. I figured. No, Joe's a sentinel. Joe's a protector. He's not going to steal yeah. a car. Have you ever broken the law? Yeah. but That's awesome. What'd you do? I don't know. Hit and run? No. <laughs> Just hits myself with the mic. Um, it's different stuff. Fair enough. I can tell you the issue with sex and cars. Sex while boosting cars. Hmm. The shifter gets in the way. Oh, nice. Right. <laughs> Strider, what's your beef of the week? <laughs> my beef of the week is perhaps it's with my energy, but probably not. It's more so on the person. And I find it's usually like a older lady, not a Karen, but like an older lady. When there's a big line and everyone's like waiting to order. And they just go in and snipe a question real quick with like the one person working. Like it, this, this is very like bougie, but like it's always at like a deli or like a uh, a smoothie bar. Like this probably happens at the Air One freaking deli all the time, where yeah. it's like, hey, just real quick question for me, and it's never a quick question. Very frustrating, dude. Very right. selfish. Right. Hate that selfishness. Do you think the question's even necessary? Or do you think they're just doing it because they want some airtime? It is never a necessary question. It's just airtime. E- yeah, it's always something that's like labeled over there. And the guy always, luckily the guy at the counter can always just answer it pretty quickly. Um, It's over there or whatever. But then there's a follow-up. Yeah, but I saw that, but this. Do you have anything in the back? And then the guy's got to ask someone else. And it's, and it's just I didn't get enough sleep. You didn't get enough? Probably. That's why I'm getting it. Earthquake wake you up? Earthquake did wake me up. And in fact, I didn't remember it until you guys mentioned it here. And then I vividly remembered, yeah. vividly remembered being like, whoa, I felt like I Did your lady I, wake up? She didn't wake up, no. She slept through it. She's a heavy sleeper. That's awesome. I know. I'm, yeah. I'm jealous. That's nice. Yeah, it must wouldn't be that nice be nice? REM sleep. If you were going to get crushed in an earthquake, wouldn't you just love to not wake up? For totally. sure. Just yeah. be done. Yeah, the earthquake this morning is like a, 
It's sort of like the earth. I feel that. It's sort of, you know, I, I got to bed at a nice time, but it's sort of like the earth shaking me awake. Be like, Stay alert, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. You're heartbroken. <laughs> right. You're like, dude, it is funny. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like the up, saddest heart- thought in the world, but when yeah. you're when it's late at night, you go, I can't wait to be asleep. Yeah, <laughs> like, I just want to be asleep. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah wait, you know, Check out of this day. I'm just done. Yeah, you're like, I'm done. Can I just be asleep yeah. now? Yeah, it's like you're like trying to get you try to get through like a painful time, and the earth is like not nah, playa, and you're like, oh. that's the movie Click, right? Right. Yeah. You just fast forward through all the the, oh, the, nice. the crummy parts. But you need those times, dude. They make you who you are. It's true. They make you it's appreciate true. the good times. Mm-hmm. And when you're when you're going, yeah, yeah. Joe, what's your beef of the week? Uh, I've been beefing with myself lately. I'm I'm my beef of the week. I what's going on? Um, <laughs> what's up, buddy? You don't have to. Consider, um, for the listeners, JT put a very loving hand on Joe's yeah, shoulder. Um, well, people have been asking me favors, and I say no because I don't freaking feel like helping. We talking about <laughs> well. There's been a few different instances. I was asked to watch cats for somebody, and who asked you to watch their cats? Are we naming names? Yeah, Do no, no. cats even need Craig. to be watched? Oh, Craig wanted you to watch his cats. Yeah. Oh, okay. For two to two or three days and stay at his place. How long has he gone? Made me feel for? bad for saying no. Huh? He made like you feel days. bad for saying yeah, that. What he says? He just th- thought it was ridiculous that I didn't want to. <laughs> Took a drive down to Redondo Beach and stayed his dirty ass apartment. <laughs> nice and then I feel, and then like a few hours later, I, I get like feelings of guilt. And the same thing happened again with some lunatic who asked me to. Uh, have her friend move. Yeah, Julie. So she designed the podcast to you, but yeah, she asked us She's both. not a lunatic. I just... She gave us a one-hour runway. She's like, hey, can you help my friend move? I was like, you can't tell me. One like, hour notice? One hour notice. I'm nah. like, if you want me to help your friend move, you got to tell me a week in advance. And I don't even know her friend. I don't think I've met yeah. the guy. Well, I know him, but I, I, besides the point, I just been... I don't like having feelings of guilt, and then I get mad at myself, and I'm trying to get over it. Love that. But you know what? It's the power of saying no. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I heard there's power in saying no. That's why I do it. I saw a YouTube video about it. Cats don't need to be watched. You put out tuna, they fucking go catch a mouse or a bird. Dog, different story. And Redondo, I mean, he lives an hour away. Yeah. It's not easy to get to Redondo, dude. No, No, and then if you got shit to do up here, like, it's 86, you can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I have stuff to do. Dude, my beef of the week, I'm going to just off the top, but this, this jewel, I've been hitting this thing like crazy. It's mm. definitely got its hooks into me. It's tough. It's, it's a slippery kind of addiction because I think sometimes when we think about addiction, we think that the craving is loud and that it's like, oh, give me this. Let me do this. But it can be much more subtle than that. You can just be sitting there and like all of a sudden your brain's just like, hey, man, why don't you just take a nice little drag of that thing? It's mm. not a big deal. We're not addicted. We just want to take a little puff because we're a little bored. But you don't realize that is the addictive voice masking itself as something minor because it knows that tone is going to more easily let you slip into its fucking grip. Mm. So uh, the pernicious voice of um, of uh, vice inducement. Stay out of my head, bro. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've had my struggles with those too. It's tough, be- and uh, the, the biggest trigger for me is I'll go surfing, and my brain will be like, "Dude, don't you want a nice treat after that? Don't you want to just take a nice rip of a little like puff bar?" Ooh! And it's just like it's that thing of where you you, you get that dopamine squirt where your mind is like, you "Go treat yourself," you know? Just yeah. have a nice little puff. You only get one. You'll be over it after that. But it's just and then it just snowballs. It keeps like, going. When quarantine first started, dude. I mean. It, just because I was, you know, I was staying at home all day. I was just ripping those things nonstop because. Oh, I bet, yeah. I was sort of, and in my mind, I was just justifying it. I was like, I was like, well, what else am I going to do? That's the thing, too. Your brain's yeah. like, okay, well, I have these other vices that are like potentially worse. Yeah. And then you're like, this isn't as bad as me getting hammered or like wailing on myself. Yeah. You're like, no, this is probably the lesser of the evils. Right. But then when you get off it, like, I'm, I, you know, because I, I realized how, 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 anxious they made me and how they just made, put made me put me in just a lower mood lower vibration and so when you get off it you're just like you're like it's your mind clear. you're like whoa like it, it but they're so hard to get off it because the cravings just don't stop but once you get off it it's just very kind of 
your happiness goes up for you get sure. boosted mm. yeah it's just so tough yeah i think i'm probably a week away from trying to get off of it but then i feel like that's the language of the uh <clears throat> the consistent user you, you know, know? I find if you go on like a trip like if you're going away for like a few days just leave it and then you'll be on a trip and you'll have less uh motivation to buy one. Oh, nice yeah, yeah maybe i'll go stay with my mom for a couple of days yeah yeah and then also, I have less vices when I'm around my parents because I want to yeah. like prove to them I don't have vices. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a really smart move. Chad, who's your uh, who's your babe of the week? Uh, my babe of the week is our our buddy Cheddar, uh, aka John. Um, so summer after we graduated from college, probably one of the more epic party moments we had is that we we it was Fourth of July, the whole squad cream pie house you know we gathered in long beach and we were just raging at uh our buddy nick aka ass man's house and so you guys have an ass clown and an ass man ass man ass clown cheddar yeah that's awesome Love it. and uh cheddar was so hammered that he ate a candle thinking it was cheese <laughs> nice did you eat the whole candle? He ate the whole candle. That's man. hilarious. And there's Jesus. there's there's video of him just slicing it up. What a beast. Yeah. And he sliced it like cheese. Put that shit on pasta. Yeah. Just grate it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Here, dude, you want to... let me top you off right there. Uh so shout out to Cheddar for uh for eating that candle, dude. Nice. Strider, who's your baby of the week? Maybe the week's got to be my freaking dank fiance, dude. That's awesome. Dude. She's just been beasting, yeah. dude. She's got a week off of work, dude. A week off of her grad school, dude. We just posted up down in Carlsbad, walked in this dank meadow of flowers, and just freaking had this stuff called Cardiff Crack, which is this dank ass tri tip, which I think you guys would both really enjoy. Joe, you would actually love it as well, but I know you guys are a big uh, bovine dude. Thanks. And um, yeah, dude. So just a freaking dank little week down in Carlsbad. Just, you know, seeing her be able to, you know, just relax a little bit. She earned it. There's nothing like relaxing after you earned it, mm-hmm. you know? Hell yeah. So just, just being a babe, just being a freaking beast. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Joe, who's your babe of the week? Uh, I got. I was on YouTube watching a bunch of uh, Tony Kukoc highlights. And, Dude, mm, nice. Yeah, t- yeah, Tony's my babe of the week <laughs> because, uh, I, I mean, I really forgot how great he was. Um, people talk about Rodman, but I think without Kukoc, the Bulls don't win that. Second three Pete. Guy was unbelievable and I for, he was six eleven. Like Yeah, he, I was gonna ask like you, he was like the he? first Dirk. Before Dirk and uh Luca and all those guys. He was yeah, he was Europe European player of the year and um you know, Jordan and Pippen kinda dogged him when he first got there or whatever and but yeah, he the guy was incredible. Nice dude. Buzzer beaters, everything. Love that. Yeah. And long. And, like, there was a game in, like, I think in the Eastern Conference Finals in 98 against Indiana. He had a game where he had, like, 30 points. And, yeah, I mean, the guy was great. He was really good. And yeah. he'd be so good in the modern NBA with his skill set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Because what was he, yeah, 6'10", he'd be like Luke. And he could handle and he could shoot it. Yeah, they'd, they'd have him handle the ball more. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, he played three positions. I mean, it's incredible. And those guys were hard on him. Like when he when he played against them in the Olympics, yeah. Scotty and Michael didn't like that Kraus liked him so much, yeah. so they went at him, and they destroyed him. Yeah. But and I, they were probably pretty tough on him when he first came over here. But he, you know, he he earned his keep. Um, dude, my baby of the week is I learned this reading the end of the wild book that I've been enjoying. Uh, it mentioned that the main character Christopher McCandless was maybe a virgin and then it said Henry David Thoreau lifelong virgin Mm. yeah so I think sometimes you know we put so much pressure on ourselves to you know it takes up so much of my real estate my relationship with the opposite sex and and uh, how I'm doing in that department and it's you know it's probably doesn't deserve that much space because then I looked up other uh, historical famous virgins and Nietzsche's on here Descartes, Immanuel Kant, Kant, yeah, Newton, Isaac Newton's number one on the list. When did they have sex finally? They or, did it. Oh, they did. They it. never did, and oh, they've man. made such huge contributions to civilization it's that good, I'm like, it's a good idea. Whoa. Look, maybe if you took all that energy, you poured it into something else. You know, you're the father of physics or of, uh, That's what I'm saying, you know, existential thought. So. 
big ups to those dudes for uh channeling all that horniness into some exactly right serious serious um you know intellectual writing thanks dudes um you nerd uh <laughs> yeah, i'm yeah. kidding i'm kidding isaac i'm kidding dude i'm thanks super for, jealous yeah thanks for discovering gravity verge yeah <laughs> That's what probably what his friends at the sign. He's like, he's like, guys, I discovered gravity. They're like, whatever, Virgin. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, who would have thought? Who would have thought that guy's name would you know echo throughout eternity? Um, Chad, who's your legend of the week? My legend of the week. Um, <clears throat> so you guys know the story of Pompeii, big volcanic eruption. Everyone, a bunch of people there got sort of you know frozen in time by the ash by the lava so it's sort of you see them in their last moment and they're just like mummified one guy is jacking off fuck yeah wow nice Let's go. so mine is the masturbating dude at pompeii who just went out like a champ uh you know he's just like oh fuck pompeii's erupting and just starts cranking his unit that's smart smart. nice yeah smartest guy there yeah and you know I wonder if he knew that, you know, he's probably going to be cemented in time. He's like, I need, I need to show people that I've, I'd fucking drill myself. You know, maybe that was his passion. And maybe if the people, the townspeople, like, were alive, they could be like, dude, Jeremy doing what he loves. He went out in style. I uh, love his name being Jeremy. Yeah. That feels right. Maybe it was even more benevolent. Like, if Joe, if there was a big tragedy about to happen... Right. Like, I got to get my dick hard real quick so future generations can see this. Oh, I right. thought you were going to say because when the house collapses, we need something to hide under. Oh, nice. dude. Oh, that, yeah, I mean, I would, honestly, yeah, you could I save lives, Joe. Yeah, you I could save lives. That's yeah. a good call. Craig would be like, are my cats okay? And you're like, yeah. Yeah. yeah your cats are fine, dude. They right. were protected in the rubble like an elevator shaft by my dump, by my shaft. <laughs> Guys, don't worry. The, the, roof, the roof is going to collapse. No, don't worry. My cock's holding it up. Yeah, that'd be cool. Hey, don't worry, Craig. I put a bowl of milk on the tip of my dick. Cats are fine. Yeah. <laughs> Strider, who's your legend of the week? Damn, my legend of the week. Um, let's see. I've been crushing the um, F1 series. I know we talked about it a lot, but I just enjoy it. I know you had a hot take, the editing. I did see it. What? You're like, I'm, the editing's... No, I love the editing. Very, I just... Uh, the the formula for each episode i'm kind of fatigued yeah. on yeah the for- exactly the formula is very built in but i find comfort in that yeah that's true bit. i find a little bit of comfort you know what you're gonna get and i just love that series and i did i, I want to go to an f1 race so bad are you annoyed that ricciardo left renault for mclaren though very annoying doesn't that just seem like a lateral move that guy's got kind of happy feet right dude he is the embodiment remember i i do like ricciardo more now but at first, I was like, this guy's a weasel. I don't like him. That was my first inclination of that guy. He enjoys the celebrity aspect yeah, so much. It's what he's doing. And he seems like a happy, fun-go-lucky guy. But you're not an F1 racer if you're not a savage. But on the Reddit threads, they people like his racing stuff. I guess he's really good at overtaking people. Like, he's really good at passing people, which is a, you know, it's, yeah, a it's bold skill. Super fun. I, I, um, I liked the guy from um, maybe Lando. Not, Lando not, Norris? No, not Lando Norris. Um, the, the Spaniard, he's playing golf with his dad. I forget his name. He's moving Maximus. to a team. I think he's moving to Ferrari. Yeah, the guy from Racing Point. Yeah. Perez, was yes. that his name? Yes, and he wasn't going to get a spot, and then he then he got a spot with Red Bull, actually. I like him a so lot. So him and Verstappen. Yeah, because that was what I was saying with team. Ricciardo and Verstappen on the same team. Because now they say the Red Bull car this year is actually going to be able to maybe challenge Mercedes. Really? That's another thing I'm fatigued on. It's just like... Dude, and the DRS thing is such BS, like... You're just following the mid tier, and so you're you're watching people compete for fourth. That's like or, or third, and it's lame. Like the sport has become so niche where it's like, but we're good at mid tier. Like we're because it's budget. Like we don't have the budget to compete up there. So, but if we're getting fourth, it means we really won. And it's like, nah, dude. Dude, that that guy Topo or whoever runs the Mercedes team, he's oh, worth Toto. He's worth seven hundred million dollars. I looked him up on Wikipedia. He's a part owner. He said he's like, I'm part owner in the team. So why would I step away at this moment in time? I had to stay here. He, he sounds so. He's just the German accent sounds, sounds like so the guy from so Beer Fest. That that yeah, he's a German dude. He talks like that. How's that guy from Haas still have a job? He's a disaster. Oh Haas, yeah, but I like him so much. I he's like a character, him. but it seems like he's like every. Yeah, that team is run like crap, dude. And then their fucking car almost blows up and kills the driver. But I guess that's Shit. not his fault. Joe, who's your legend of the week? 
Um, I saw that Roy Williams retired the basketball oh, coach. Oh, nice, dude. Good sports related babes and legends. Yeah. Um, not to bring it back to like Chicago, but like he's the guy who recruited Michael Jordan in North Carolina. So like he should be in the Hall of Fame just for doing that, you know. And when he talks about Dean Smith, Roy Williams, he still calls him like he says like coach or yeah or sir. He still has that respect. Yeah, because Roy was there and then went to like Kansas or whatever, then went back to Carolina to coach. But yeah. Only coach. By all accounts, the guy was like a two great programs. person and everything, huh? Only coach with 400 dubs at two different programs. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, Roy, hats off. That's awesome. Let me look up real quick who won the – because we might be done, right? Let's see. Oh, yeah. No, that game's still going. Uh, They're up 14 with 12 left. 12 minutes? Baylor's up. Is it within reach? like to see Gonzaga. Maybe we can watch it after this. Uh, my legend of the week is Simon. Yeah, we, we hung out on Saturday, and I just uh, had the best time kicking it with him. He's such a fun, cool guy. All good vibes. Showed me Zed's chicken coop, and he gave me an egg to bring home. And uh, I was in my Uber, and when I got out, the egg was broken in my <laughs> in my pocket. Was it really? But I was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, what did like, you do what? to clean it, dude? I just I haven't cleaned it yet. <laughs> I just threw the egg away. I was like, I was drunk. I was like, oh, fuck. And then, uh, you know, biodegradable, I just toss it into the woods or something. But, uh, yeah, Simon's just a beast. And it's cool hanging out with the, they're German, you know, and they talk about, I was like, how's it adjust in LA? They're like, it's, it's, it's weird getting used to the drama. Cause I guess they're used to Germans have a more stoic, cool vibe, which I really, you know, jive with, but it's, uh, it's interesting to just hear about like the cultural differences. Like they say everyone in Germany, they're, they're a bit too chill sometimes. Really? Oh. And so they like it over here that we're a little bit like feisty with the emotions. Whoa. So yeah, but he's, he's a really chill dude, super deep, super cool, super fun to chat with. So Simon, thanks for the hospitality. It was fun kicking it with you, bro. He's a legend. And Zed as well. Thank you, dude. Legends. Um, is chat, it chillness what? or is it you get punished if you have emotions in Germany? I don't know. No, I'm just honestly, if I'm doing a deep, joking. deep reading of it, I think maybe like fervor kind of fell out of favor after the Fuhrer. <laughs> That's what I'd imagine. So they were like, "Hey, maybe we should kick it in a different direction." And just you know, I went to Berlin one time. Huge weed parade. Really? Yeah. Nice, cool. dude. You smoking weed? I'll take baby rips. If you have a baby rip, no, Joe, you hey, don't. If Joe baby takes rip. a sip of a, oh, yeah. of, of a of a of a fruit smash. I will take a baby rip. No, I'll do it on this the, on the pod. Two, I'll do it on the 200th episode. I'll do it. All right. Well, there you go. We're oh. going to have to wait 15 episodes. Oh, I thought we were like three away. Will you just drink a fruit smash at the end of this episode? <laughs> I don't know. I'm One scared. sip, dude. What are you afraid I of? Bad anxiety. Really? Yeah. Can't I'm drink s- today. I'm sorry, man. You do all a right, sip. Right, right. Oh, from last night? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just over. making that stuff, but Uh-oh. just go with it. Don't question it. Uh, sorry. You know what I mean? So uh, you do have bad anxiety or you don't? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not at the moment. Sounds like an anxious answer. Do you to want me. touch? Yeah. Does that feel better? Yeah, it feels a lot, lot better. That's nice. Thanks. Chad, what's your quote of the week? My quote of the week comes from uh, Sons of Anarchy, from Clay Morrow, Ron Perlman. Baby. Literally. Baby, you killed him. You played me for a chump, and I was. I was no match for that tight pussy and that angry, broken heart. <laughs> Amazing. I just like, this is one of the more serious moments of the show, but I just can't stop laughing at that line. I was no match for that tight pussy and broken, angry heart. It's a powerful combination. <laughs> yeah, they'll get you. Especially Ron Perlman. Just, just soldiering over. Nah, baby, you played me like a chump. Strider, what's your quote of the week? My quote of the week, you brought up this movie early on and I haven't been able to shake it ever since. It's a quick quote. It's a good quote. It's an effective quote. Nice. I believe the prisoner wishes to speak. Freedom! so fucking good dude yeah, and his friends faces acting. dude is the, the the supportive acting in that moment so damn dank dude he sees the ghost of his lover 
It's so damn good. And then the guy like JT mentioned, the executioner guy, because he wanted him to say mercy, right? Mercy, William. He wanted him to mercy. say mercy, and he goes, Phew. or did he want him to say a word that started with F, like for, ask for forgiveness? I forget, but you think he's going to actually say... He's going to finally break. Yeah, he's going to say mercy. But he never breaks. Never breaks. And just lets out. He's got know. an iron will, that fella. So good. It's a great movie. It's one of the best movies ever. I love that movie. I watch that. It's three hours long. I'll watch it start to finish multiple times a week. Do you think it's vain for Mel Gibson to write that part for himself? Of course. But it's a vain industry. It's Hollywood. That comes with the territory. It's like if he was trying not to act like he wasn't being vain, maybe he was. I don't that's know. That's more vain. That's Yeah. Then that's whack. But it's like, dude, I wrote myself a badass role. I'm on a horse. I'm giving fucking speeches. I'm, you know. Because there's shots of him just on the horse just looking like, like when he's coming to kill the nobleman. Oh, dude. And he's just this force of, you know, nature that's going to right the wrongs. Yeah, drops the mace and just whacks him. Yeah. He gave himself that direction. Yeah, he said, be more badass. He's like, Mel, you're not bringing it. I need you to be sexy up there. <laughs> yeah, dude. He can do it. Joe, what's your quote of the week? Uh, this is from Men Without Women by uh, Ernest Hemingway. The most painful thing is losing yourself in the process of loving someone too much. And forgetting that you are special too. So you guys going through breakups, don't don't forget you're special. Dude, thanks, Jay. Thanks, man. Yeah. And now you guys have your freedom. Freedom. What's up? Yeah, you are getting disemboweled. Oh right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, luckily that didn't happen. Your nuts just got tanned. Yeah, we just had a tough conversation. But I did tan. Yeah, that's right. I did tan my nuts. That's right. Dude, it's hold on one second. I'm sorry. Okay, I, I can't find a quote of the week from Into the Wild. I left the book in the other room. Ah. But I was watching a video about the fighter Andrew Galata, big boxer from the uh, the '90s, heavyweight pugilist, and uh, he was a dirty fighter. And one of the comments said he's a real dirty fighter, and he, he'd go he'd go uh you know head butt, he'd go low blow, and someone said. Andrew Gallat is the only guy I've ever seen throw combinations below the belt. So most of the time, most of the time when someone cheap shots you, they hit you with one shot to the nuts. Gallat, and you can watch the video, would unload like four bunches wow. all to the balls. And it's so over the line that I don't even think the refs knew how to like corral it. You know what I mean? What do you do at that point? It's so extreme that you're just like, hey man, just cut it out. But he throws brutal, brilliant combinations straight to guys balls Damn. oh my like, god like four to six punches punches and bunches just annihilating <laughs> and because most of the time you throw one because you can be hey it was an accident you know i meant to hit him just yeah. above there but when you're watching four punches in quick succession from a heavyweight killer all to the nuts and then someone else said he would do it when he was winning <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> just to dude. further break the gut um chad what's your phrase that we forget after it um, dude, Joe just tried a seltzer. Oh man, yeah. I can't wait for them when that happens. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that'll get me fired I up. Mean, Joe, when is that gonna happen? happen? Now, dude. I don't know. I just, just do it I now. Let's freaking broast her dominance. You've never had a seltzer. I don't want. To. If I go grab you one, is that too much? Can I'll I go right one? now. Yeah. Start. Can you Rather grab one? I'm getting you. I'm getting them one right I don't now. Want it? Get them one, and then we'll You're skip to one. you. What's your phrase of the week for getting after it? I was talking about guilt earlier, so uh, my nice. phrase is probably uh, <laughs> leave behind the guilt and get built. Did you make that up? Yeah. That's killer. Thanks. Fuck yeah. That was really good. Leave behind the guilt, get built. Yeah, uh, was... My phrase of the week for getting after it is battle bots. Hell yeah. That was just an amazing show. It's that. still running. Great show. You have two choices here. Here, you can do tropical punch and very blessed. What do you think? Andrew? I don't want it. Joe, just sip it. Can't it's the end it of the today. episode. Come on, Sorry. Joe. Too scared. Tropical punch or berry blast, dude. I don't want it. Will you just sip it and say what you think? All right, is there a deeper reason that you don't want it? Because it, that'll make. I'm us worried about bad. that too. I'm like, are Will we? Will like, make us feel bad? No, you, you have a deeper no, I, reason. I, I, I just don't. I don't want to drink alcohol today. I've, I've had enough the last uh, day. All right, that's fair enough. I guess. All right, well, this was a. I think that's an exciting ending to see someone. But not I will. Do the thing that I will. Wants them to do. I will do it eventually. Sweet. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, cool. I'm gonna hold everyone in suspense though. That fires me up that you're gonna do it one day. 
I think it's better you didn't do this episode. I think it's good you stuck to your guns and you weren't peer pressured. I think that's gonna be encouraging. Yeah, for I'm a not lot gonna of get peer pressured by you guys or anybody for that matter. I love. Oh, that. you will. Right on, kids at home. I'll pressure you, Joe. Do what Joe just did. When we say cut, we're all gonna pin you and force this fucking kid <laughs> down yep. your throat. But on yep. camera, I'll say that's really awesome. And then we're gonna put our dicks on his face and film it. And we're gonna film it. <laughs> yep. You better film that. <laughs> we're gonna do a big 180 from the mm-hmm. advice we've been giving. Uh, Stry, did you give a phrase? <laughs> no, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good looking out, man. And we're going to lick his asshole. Yeah, yeah we're going to lick your ass. ass yeah, I'll take care yeah. of that, Joe. Some hair. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My phrase of the week for getting after it is probably freedom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's that called? The death girdle? The <sighs> death rattle? Death yeah, rattle. that's it. Death rattle. Death rattle. <sighs> okay, when you pretend dead, do you hook. close your eyes or do you leave them open? Close. Oh, it's probably a better choice to leave open, though. Never seen someone That's die. It's probably harder to pull off. Like totally. To fake. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because yeah, you'll see people coming. It's so tough not to follow. All right, dudes. That was fun. Good shit. Yeah. Guys, check out our merch shop, cgd.com. You can get a Strider Dank IPA shirt. Dank. We gotta get it. next next line. We'll get we'll get Joe a shirt. Yeah, I'd love I'd love to have a shirt. Um, it's coming. I'd wear maybe shirt one out of it. maybe one that's just an arrow down. I'm with Joe's dong. That's a great call. Okay. I'll let you pick though. All right. Sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to step on your toes there, but I do think that the Stokers would love to represent your dong in some form of attire. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, dudes. All right. Thanks, guys. Leave us some reviews, too. Yeah, it Helps guys. out the pod. We love reading them. Thank you guys for stopping It in. fires Thank me up. You. Anytime I go to the thing and there's new reviews, I'm always, so happy. Always cool. Yeah. Helps us out. It's just, it just feels it's good. It's really nice. All right, bros. If you need advice, these guys are really